Latha, her daughter Anita and her husband Prakash are leaving Bangalore on the night train. It's an eight hour journey back to Latha's home village in rural India, a place she left when she was just 16. She's returning as an unlikely success story. Martha works here in the urban slums of Bangalore. <laughs> The 24-year-old entrepreneur sells solar lights to people who own virtually nothing. Latha works for Pollinate Energy, an Australian organisation that aims to help people and be financially self-sustaining. We work in urban slum communities, which are at the very bottom of the bottom of the pyramid. Um, <laughs> so fresh. 28-year-old Kat Kimorley is Lata's boss. In 2012, she and four other young Australians co-formed Pollinate to bring cheap solar lights to slum dwellers. So there's 400 million people who live in India without access to electricity and that's more people than any other nation. And we basically decided that if we wanted to solve this huge problem, it had to be a business solution. You just can't give away 400 million lights. Namaste, Auntie. Now, Polnet Energy and company in Kasamata. I am a Sulatan. I am a Sulatan. Polnet employs sales reps like Latha to sell the portable lights door to door, or in this case, tent to tent. I am a male. I am a female. I am a female. I am a female. I am a female. Millions of destitute families in India rely on kerosene lamps and stoves in the evenings. Getting rid of that smoke is one of the lowest hanging fruits to reducing climate change, but it's also really important for health because the smoke that comes out of those lanterns and the cook stoves is equivalent to two packs of cigarettes a day for the women and children that live in these communities and it's the second largest killer of women and children across India. Forty-six-year-old Abdul and his 12-year-old son Ronnie are exactly the kind of people Pollinate set out to try to help. In their world, one man's trash is another's treasure. Abdul and Ronnie are known as rag pickers. They spend hours sifting by hand through dumped household rubbish looking for anything that can be unsold and recycled. That's about 20 cents. Ronnie has a sharp eye for the good stuff, but today even he is struggling.
কাজ করতে হয় তো এর চাইতে কষ্ট আর পৃথিবীতে কিছুই থাকে না Once they finish their rubbish picking, they come back here to an illegal work camp on the outskirts of Bangalore, where they live amongst the rubbish they collect. There's no running water or electricity. Abdul bought a pollinate light a few months ago, and while it wasn't cheap, it is proving to be useful. For most of the people that we're working with in these urban slums, when we're providing a solar light, every time I sell it, I think, you know, this is the same type of, of investment as it is for a plasma screen TV in Australia. You know, it's a big investment for the family, even though it's only about $30 when you look at their income, that's about the equivalent. Um, so it's not something that they can sort of decide quickly or, you know, are flippant about. It's a really big, important decision for them, and that's the way we need to treat them when we're, when we're providing those products. <laughs> Today, Abdul's neighbour, Major, wants to buy two solar lights from Latha. But selling a product on instalment to people who have next to nothing is not an easy task. जिनके पास चारों सही है वो गरीब नहीं हो सकता <laughs> There's lots of cases where a lot of things are given away for free and we were finding that if we did do that, the solar lights were not used and not cared for and all of those things. But if we got people to pay just what they could afford over a series of weeks, the way that they looked after them, the way they serviced them was really different. <laughs> Saleswoman Latha isn't much better off than Abdul and his neighbour. She lives in a tiny house with unreliable water and electricity. Her arranged marriage fell apart when she was 16. exam. <laughs> Latha found work in a garment factory but she knew she had to do more to give her daughter, Anita, a better start in life than the one she had. I spoke in English class, I English in English class, I learned English in Canada, I learned English in Canada, I learned English in Canada, Lata was one of our first female pollinators and it was really exciting to bring her on board because for most women to go into these urban slum communities is incredibly daunting and scary. Back at the slum, Abdul and Ronnie are going through their latest haul, 
Watching on is Abdul's nine-year-old daughter, Lippy. <laughs> Abdul, what makes it a good week and what makes it a bad week? For some items, Abdul must collect more than 100 kilograms to make even a few dollars. 15 rupees, 15 rupees kg. Most people in this slum are illegal immigrants from neighbouring Bangladesh. Like many of Polonate's customers, they could be here one day and gone the next. They're people who have come from rural places to the city to find work, usually in construction sites or as rag pickers, and to make a life for themselves. They're sort of like the modern day pharaoh's slaves building this next new empire that we all sort of take for granted that is just coming up before our eyes and yet they're completely sort of ignored and invisible to the state here. Aluminium, yeah, killing, uh, separate, 300 rupees kg. Abdul and his family arrived only five months ago. Life was very different for them in Bangladesh. Back there, he owned a small store and his own home. Our country is a teenage girl. Our country is a teenage girl. We have a lot of people who live in the top. We have a lot of people who live in the top. We have a lot of people who live in the top. We have a lot of people who live in the top. खावा दावा करे उटा आला दा जेकने मनुष्य रात्रि सोए सोवा रूम में गुला आला दा सब किसी एवं आला दाला 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 दाव करा अन्ना उधर बारे तो बिशाल भरी होनी बोरु भरी But after falling into debt and losing his shop, Abdul felt he had no choice but to sneak over the border with his family and try to make some quick money in India. शीतर बीतेरे धान खेत, हेर बीतेरे हम बुशेरे सी दो ही तीन घंटा में डर नहीं है। आज जो दे हमारे पास है थक तो तालु जरा हमारे तो नहीं है, खाना आस्तो है तो ना। ऐ जो नहीं आर की अमी खाने आर सी आज, बस दो डेरे जो दी किसू India's new Prime Minister, Hindu nationalist Narendra Modi, has promised to crack down on the hundreds of thousands of illegal workers like Abdul. He lives in constant fear of being picked up and arrested by authorities. Because of their illegal status, Lippi doesn't attend the local school. The only education available for these kids is when a local imam comes a few times a week to teach the Quran. Lippi school is aito. Or hatel lagha jodi apne dekhen na, apne apni arche jo hai jabanji. Aato duk bas, aato first class hatel lagha. Ingaji, Bangla, kato shundo. Aaja me meder niye. While Abdul scours for rubbish each day, his wife Jasmine cleans and tends to the homes of the neighbourhood's wealthy. It's a daily reminder of what her family doesn't have. Arakon. আমার দিনটা এমন ভাবে চলে সারা দিন কাজ করি বড় বড় ঘরে আমার খুবই ভালো লাগে বাসাতে আসার পর আমার কান্না ধরে রনির কি বয়স কাজে এই কাজ করা রনি কাজে যায় আমার এই মেয়েটা সারা দিন বাসায় থাকি এই ধুলো মাটিতে সারা দিন খেলা করে ওগো বয়সে যে লেখা পড়া যে কোনো দিন এই লোকে আমি তো কোনো দিন কল্পনাও করতে পারি না যে আমার স্বামী এই কাজ করব आर आमादेर एक आस कोरे आमाश सोमशर सालाई थे रखते पार बो हाँ तो अपन अनकियर बोल बो आमाश तो खूब गर्वती होती है अर्जुन
while they struggle to earn enough to return home, Abdul and Jasmine do whatever they can to make life for the family more comfortable. <laughs> আমরা <laughs> For the kids, the best part about the Pollinate Light is that it doubles as a phone charger. It means they can watch Bangladeshi video clips, a small reminder of home. Four-year-old Ashraf, who lives next door, gets to practice his dance moves. He's popular at local weddings, where he performs to earn his family a few extra rupees. Is that a community there? No, I don't think so. This is high density. Today, Kat Kimoli from Pollinate is in the city of Hyderabad. With the help of visiting volunteers from Australia, she's setting up a new office here. Here, yeah, wow, if you look at that, that's, that's got to be a thousand or more tents. Using Google Maps, they search for clumps of the blue tarpaulins most slum dwellers use to protect their huts from the elements. All these green dots here are places that we can know, we can send our pollinators out to. We have a product that can help change their life. Does, do they have any access to electricity? A deep passion for sustainable energy is what drove Kat and her co-founders to establish the company. where our background is, it's in renewable energy and that's what we know. So we thought, you know, there's a huge amount of problems in these urban slums, but if we could tackle one effectively, then we could start to slowly tackle some of the other big problems too. Latha's having trouble meeting the company's sales targets, so she's being given extra support. Today, she's heading out with Rajan, Pollinate's number one seller. <laughs> the people in this slum make baskets for a living, earning only a few hundred rupees for every item they weave. Rajan quickly finds his first customer. <laughs> He's a bit of a pro with these difficult clients. It'll cost the customers about the same as they'd pay for a five-month supply of kerosene, but they end up with clean energy. After Rajan closes the deal, more potential customers gather. It's been an eye-opening experience for Latha.
As night falls, many of the tents in the slum go dark, but not all of them. Rajan's customer is enjoying his new purchase. Tonight is the first night Venkataya and his family have had a light in their home for more than a year. The UN estimates that by 2020, 900 million people will be living in slums across the world. In India, the urban population is set to double in the next two decades, putting enormous pressure on land and services and leaving many to fend for themselves. Our big dream is that people who are living at the bottom of the pyramid get exactly the same access to services and products that change your life as people in the West. That's a world that I would like to live in, so that's what we're trying to work towards. Latha's confidence has picked up, and so too have her sales. Namaste, Auntie. Okay, I'll light one. Okay. Yeah. Abhi ek. Pura cash kar dena. Oh, thank you very much, Auntie. Ah, बहुत खुशी होगा. Full full cash में light बेच दिया. Full cash में full payment आ गया मंजे. बहुत खुशी होगा. Today, she's travelling home to her village to be the guest of honour at a family celebration. She's here with her new husband, Prakash, whom she met through work. In the eyes of her relatives, the new job has given her status. <laughs> Pollinate Energy Company is working in Australia company and work in Australia. I have a lot of 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 work in Australia. Pollinate Energy is working in Australia. Susan, she's here. Susan, she's here. In the slums of Bangalore, Abdul's work goes on. <laughs> Using the lamp, Abdul can work longer hours and hopefully earn that little bit more to support his family. For him, the future is uncertain. Just as it was a struggle to buy the solar lamp, He's trying even harder to reach his next goal, to return home to Bangladesh with enough savings to educate Ronnie and Lippi.